This is David from SwingingPoolLearning.com. In this video, I'm going to go over your ideal runtime for your pool. And the ideal runtime is based on your pool size. So you'll need to find out how many gallons of water are in your pool. You can use some online calculators to calculate the gallons of water in your pool. You simply measure your pool. Also, you want to measure the depth of the pool and get an average depth by measuring the shallow end. And then, of course, the deepest part of the pool. And of course, the runtime will differ depending on the pool size. The larger the pool, the longer the pool needs to run. The smaller the pool, the less time your pump needs to run. And if there's an attached spot, you want to also make sure you calculate the volume and add it to the pool volume. Next, you need to know the gallons per minute or how much flow the pump is pulling in from the skimmer into the equipment and back out the return line. And the best way to get the flow is with a flow meter. There are various different flow meters. I like the FlowViz flow meter, but you can get a variety of different flow meters. And once you know the flow, you can calculate the gallons per minute very easily. And some of the newer variable speed pumps, like the Pentair and Teleflow 3, have a built-in flow meter. The goal is to get at least one cycle of water through your system. That means that you want all the pool water being pulled in through the pump, going through the filter, and back out again at least one time per day. Two cycles is ideal in the peak summer months. But that depends on your pool usage. If your pool is heavily used, you want to have two cycles. If you don't use your pool much, one cycle should be sufficient. And the reason why you want at least one cycle of water is that you want to ensure that the water is safe to swim in and you want to prevent bather to bather disease. Basically, the reason why you're circulating the water is to make sure that the chlorine reaches all of the areas in the pool and that the pool is sanitized, which means that the chlorine has the ability to kill bacteria, viruses, and microorganisms that may be in the water by being circulated thoroughly throughout the pool. Here's an example of an ideal runtime that's going to also save you the most energy. This pool is 15,000 gallons and I'm going to run the low speed at 1800 RPMs for 12 hours and this will give me one full cycle of water with 20 gallons per minute and then I'm going to run a medium speed of 2400 RPMs for five hours, which is 50 gallons per minute. And this will give me the second cycle of water. So if you have a variable speed pump, you would run the pump at a lower RPM, but you would run the pool for a longer run time to get the two cycles of water through your pool. And if you have a single speed pump, you would use an intermatic timer to set your run time. These on off trippers will turn the pool on and off for you. And the arrow on the intermatic timer will point to the time of day and you can set this by pulling the face towards you and then turning the dial and then letting it snap back into place. So to set the runtime, you would put the on tripper on the yellow dial and just screw it down tightly and then simply put the off tripper when you want the pool to turn off and the pool will turn on and off for you each day at the set time. If the pool is 15,000 gallons and you're getting 65 gallons per minute, you can run it for four hours per day. However, that means that your pool is off for 20 hours, which is not optimal. I would definitely run it for at least two cycles, which is eight hours, or you may want to run it for 10 hours, which is almost three cycles. And this will get about 95% of the water through your pool filter each day. And if you have a larger pool, you want to run a pool longer. And if you're not pumping at least 65 gallons per minute, you definitely need to run the pool longer as well. And I suggest if you're still using a single speed pump to replace that with a variable speed pump to maximize your energy savings each season. A few things to note, you want to make sure that the filter is clean and functioning properly. And you also want to make sure you have the proper chlorine level in the pool. And I also have a video on using chlorine effectively that you're going to refer to to make sure you have the right chlorine level in your pool. Ultimately, setting the pool's runtime is really up to you. The longer you run the pool, the better the water quality will be. And having a variable speed pump is the best way to ensure that your pool is getting sufficient runtime with the benefit of you saving money on your energy costs.